So All it's right. a stretch for each row. Call the meeting to order is 2.33 p.m. on this 13th of July.
So the tip itself is correct, the table and the, the table and the okay, the table and the metal All right, I just was checking. Okay. <laughs> table, uh, table, uh, okay. Table four, non-motorized. Uh, basically, we have additional money here. We're balancing the order, uh, reflecting the obligation for the handbook order. Have some additional money that came out of what we were not able to utilize in the payment replacement. In addition, let's sure make sure I have this correct. We have a couple that are in the same boat, but. Needing that match. Which ones are those again? Sorry. Um, it's actually all three that you see in uh, 17. So, bike plan, bed plan, and trails implementation, those three are needing that match. Portions of them, yes. Portions of them. So, this is the plan right now, and hopefully in the next few weeks they'll pass the capital budget and we won't have to worry about it. But that's where we are right now in those. Table six. The NHS and it's outside of the AMATS allocation, but we show it in our tip federal service transportation funds inside the AMATS boundaries. Uh, in this case, this is an Anchorage area arterial, principal arterial pavement resurfacing and ADA compliance. This is something that we show back in table uh, 10 of our tip. And that is this is not a project, it's not a program that exists right now. There's no funds in it. So we had it showing in the back there without the, the, the projects, but really no funding, and there just was a little confusion. So we zeroed it out and put that part of that table 10 out. So that just reflects the current step as it relates to payment replacement in that program. Okay. Table. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Table 8, unless you have a question. No, that's it. Okay. Okay, table eight, basically, uh, we are reflecting the, the current uh, status, as far as we know it, of the kindergarten crossing project, which is no funding towards that, so we're deleting the funds shown in the kindergarten crossing access connections and the kindergarten crossing toll funds bridge facilities. And then table 10, again, as I mentioned, we are removing the uh, information there on the Anchorage area principal arterial paper for surface and media compliance. Those are the changes, and uh, we need this needs policy committee approval to the dollar figure. So we're asking for your recommendation to the policy committee for approval. We need a motion for that effect. Well, we need discussion first, and then allow the okay. public to comment, and then we'll do motion. Any any other questions from the committee at this And I'll open it to the public. Are there any questions or comments on this item from the public? Hearing none, the matter lies with the committee. I recommend we uh, approve to move this to the policy committee for their review and approval. As edited, as edited on the Eagle River Road. So uh, to be even and fair and all that wonderful stuff, 
we can either add sunset clauses to all those committees or just remove it out of here. And this seems to be, it makes more sense. We still, the AMAT still has the ability to decide we don't need X committee anymore. So this seems like it would just be as, the cleanest way to remove that. Um, as you can see, it had a termination date of July 1st, 2017. So we're a little bit behind the ball on that. Whoopsie. Uh, so I guess what we're asking to do is uh, change the bylaws, recommend approval of changing the bylaws, and uh, continue the committee. Okay. And we have to forward that to the policy, to the policy committee. committee. Sure. And just to clarify something you said, pretty much all of the special advisory committees, if the policy committee so chose, any of them could be terminated. The only uh, the, the only committee that is required by federal law is the policy board. Okay. So we the technical committee is not something that's required by federal law, but 97 percent of NPOs have one. Um, probably about 40 percent have a citizen advisory committee. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you guys could be. You give you can give yourself <laughs> a, a spare Thursday, second Thursday every month. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments from the committee before I to ask our staff any downside that you see on this? I, I don't think so. I mean, again, as I before I got here, there was a similarly constituted citizen advisory committee made out of you know, regular citizens, citizens from around the uh, around the municipality, and it uh, they were really having a challenging time getting a quorum. And so, in the uh, 2001 operating agreement, I believe, it was just before that, but they change their citizens advisory committee from that AMATS built one to piggyback on to what planning and zoning did. So planning and zoning sat as our citizens advisory committee. So we had that option to change it then. We could do the same thing now if the, if, you know, the committees, the policy committee decides it's not working the way it is. Okay. I don't see any real downside. Any other questions or comments? this time, is there anybody from the public that has any questions or comments regarding the Citizens Advisory Committee's asset clause? Hearing none, the matter lies with the committee. One motion this one. <clears throat> so I make a motion to approve the uh, approve the removal of the sunset clause and reinstate the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Today, so she gave me an update, and I will just read it to you. The project is on schedule. Uh, this Friday is the end of the public comment period for uh, Tech Memo 1A, which is goals, objectives, and performance measures. Tech Memo 1B, which is which the screening criteria, and there was the deficiency analysis PowerPoint. Um, so that again, that comment period ends on Friday tomorrow for those three items. On Monday, it says Tech Memo 2, staff is to email draft deficiency analysis document to the CAC and the TAC on 
Monday for review and comment. And uh, again, that's the draft deficiency analysis. The PowerPoint was what was out for review. This is uh, the actual document itself. So the draft will be sent out on Mondays? Yes. Okay. To the CAC and the TAC. Uh, on the Monday the 31st, we are requesting that we have the CAC comments back from Cortec Memo 2. Do we have the call for projects out right now, too? Yes. Uh, Project yeah, nomination. That's out the same time. Okay. That as well. To that and so far as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then at our next TAC meeting, we'll need TAC approval of tech numbers 1A, 1B, and 2 to move forward. Do we think we're going to need a work session to finalize any of those Do we have standing work sessions that? We current? probably should have one, yeah. Just for the next TAC. Yeah. yeah, before the next TAC, just so we can go through those documents. Yeah, you guys had asked us to do a TAC work session um, before each meeting, yeah. a week before, the week of. Um, so we'll try and schedule something just to get people to do this. I also have another comment. Sorry, Aaron from DOT. Um, we are also releasing Tech Memo 2 to the public for a 15 day public review of Tech Memo 2 before we bring it to you guys. So that'll be done at the same time that we give it to the CAC for review. Yeah, um, we've been receiving comments um, since the beginning of the project started, and um, one of the things that we're going to work on uh, wrapping up once the comment period closes on July 14th is um, a complete record of the comments received to date, mm -hmm. so um, everybody can go on and review what's been said, how it's been um, looked at, and then the comment response summaries that have been brought to this body are available online as well. So um, there's kind of a running, but we wanted to get one document pulled together that has all of the comments to date, and we'll be doing that moving forward. There'll, there'll be specific time periods that we collect all the comments for, and then we release them into one document out for public consumption. So um, the survey, I haven't heard how we're looking at survey results quite yet with MetroQuest, but that does close on Friday as well. Um, so I should have a better sense of, of how that's coming along. But um, the comment forms have been used. Um, we're receiving everything from email, mail, phone calls, and um, people are definitely participating. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Public involvement <laughs> coordinator from AMS. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? And the next item is the third quarter obligation report. I'll let Aaron do that one. People are probably tired of hearing Apparently, said voted item was better. Uh, <laughs> Delivery. Delivery then. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> hello, I'm Aaron Yogan Allen. I'm uh, the AMAS planner at DOT. So, we're looking at the third quarter obligation report for FY17. Just so you know, down on the very bottom, there's a little indication of what we're talking about when we say third quarter. Third quarter is uh, May to June of this year that we're talking about. We are required to be plus or minus 5% of our overall allocation, um, so we can be above and below. Yeah? Should it be April to June? Really? I'm sorry. Everything, everything today? <laughs> yes, it should be April. Sorry. I'm I'll correct sorry. That. No, 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 that's good. Um, I just wanted to give people an idea of what do we mean by third quarter, because they're yeah. like, oh, is that no, state, I, uni, calendar, fiscal? No, yeah, yeah, we just, yeah, take, we just it take it out. So we just kind of move on. Um, okay, so not too much has changed from second quarter. Uh, just a little bit, as you recall, last uh, second quarter we had about 1.6 million that we were under, uh, that we were showing as not obligating. 
we've kind of uh, dealt with that a bit towards the non-motorized uh, facilities, um, some more for uh, C Street pathway rehabilitation. Um, and as Craig has said, there are three kind of projects that are on the hook right now for the state match, and that's Brayton Drive at about 1.6 million out of the pavement pot. Uh, we have a little over a million for Eagle River out of the, um, sorry, the bike plan project implementation. Uh, and that's for Eagle River bike lane shoulders. Uh, we're working on that. And then we have a couple hundred thousand for the pedestrian plan as continue and start some design work uh, for the next round as we get into the next tip. And then we have about two million out of the Anchor Jerry White Trail Rehab. So we're looking five million plus that's on the line right now. Uh, we're doing everything we can to uh, keep that going and get those funds obligated, looking at different options for getting the match. So um, I anticipate a, a capital budget being passed soon. Because <laughs> just so you know, it's not just these projects that's on hook, it's everything that's federally funded. So. Um, I'm holding out hope because I don't want to have to deal with the fallout. Um, <laughs> um, just so you know, we did really well this year uh, so far. O'Malley Road was a huge project, 12.2 million. Uh, we got that moving forward, so that's awesome that we got that out. Um, we did fine on the pavement replacement. Uh, the Glen Highway Integrated Corridor Management ICM study on the first page, 200,000, it shows as uh, uh, anticipated it's gone through. Uh, it just wasn't done at the time I pulled information for this report on July, uh, June f uh, 5th is when I pulled it. It was after, it was like the 10th or something that it went through. So that was not being held up, so that's good because we're moving forward on that. Um, not too much more on the roadway table. Everything's done or will be, hopefully. Uh, Non-motorized is the big one, unfortunately. We've done well this year so far, but we have kind of big stuff out there. Everything on the CMAC table, table five, has gone forward except for the bus stop facility improvements and the transit fleet expansion replacement operations. And um, that one's a unique one because what happens with that is it's federal money, FHWA money that's transferred over to FTA for the public transportation department to use. So that one I don't expect to be held up at all with a capital budget. So we'll anticipate that one going forward just fine. And as you can see right now, based on our expectation, we're, we're fine getting everything obligated uh, by the end of the year. So I hope I don't have to come back to you with the fourth quarter obligation report and show $5 million that we didn't get obligated, because I don't like doing that. That's all I got. Can I make one minor correction? <laughs> Can I make another correction? Of course. For the Spinard Road Corridor Strategic Plan, mm -hmm. um, that should be Chugach Way. Thank you. So it's C-H-U-G-A-C-H. You know, I, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Cheryl Richardson. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I've been following the transportation planning process for a while, and uh, the MTP process, gosh, for six to seven months now. And I would urge the <coughs> this group to look at the public involvement process for the land use plan as a model. 
Um, I have found this process to be especially op opaque and uncommunicative as a member of the public. And I would urge you to look at how the land use plan folks publish their comments promptly so that a dialogue could be started and all parts of the community knew what the others were saying. And then they built an issue response summary as they worked through uh, a huge volume of comments that documented all their decisions and what they were based on. Um, we, Anchorage Citizens Coalition, is who I represent most of the time, we submitted significant comments and have had, the only feedback we've had basically is business as usual. So I would just urge you to open up your public involvement process and consider having a dialogue with the community. Sid Atwood, and I'm just going to speak. Sid, S I D, Atwood. Okay, One T in that. Uh, just like the people living down the young money. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to speak as a UAA student uh, pre preparing to graduate this coming May. Um, and I'll be riding my bike to and from for a little while really appreciate the people mover and this may not be the right forum I don't know but uh, when I when I do my uh, sign up for classes I get this card for writing in the in the bus I'm gonna see how to get my money back this time because it does cost something for that card for the bus part because I live at uh, the intersection of Logan and 20th Avenue Northeast I mean northeast, east. Starting to sound like I'm still in Seattle. Um, and I'm going to have to walk further than halfway to class before we're able to catch a bus that goes to the class. Because that area just plain got blotted out. And I know of no other uh, contingency that's planned for us. So that's my comment.